and put it down there. So please remind me at the end to stop recording at the break between the classes and then to resume recording afterwards. Um, this is it. This is Empower Mac Tech. Uh, EmpowerMac.com will get you there, right over there. CandidEmpowerMac.com is my email. The other thing is today's classes can be found at KenSpencer.com. This is where I keep my previous classes. So I'm going to give you some links during this presentation later, but don't worry about it. I've already posted them to here, and I'll show you how to get there. So if you go to KenSpencer.com and click on MacNexus, that kind of makes sense so far. And when I click on MacNexus, I get this page. And you'll notice contacts and calendars are already there. And once I get the videos posted, they'll be here. Ah, but if you click on Read More, in this Read More, it's opening up. It's taking a little while. The internet's a little slow. These are going to be some links that I'm going to show you that I'm going to ex in when we do calendar today. These links are to some subscription calendars, so you won't have to take notes when we go to that part because they're already there. Later on today, like I said, probably well, probably tomorrow I'll get the videos posted. Anyway, to go back to that, it's Ken, Ken or KenSpencer.com. Click on MacNexus. I'm sorry, the internet is really slow. But so click on MacNexus. Oh, and I'll point out one other thing farther down on this page. I think most of you have gotten this already. Come on, load. All the way down here, you'll see a little PDF right over here, okay? If you click on that. This is a two-page PDF of keyboard shortcuts for the Mac that you can print out, and it's also a good place for all your passwords, because I have certain categories for your passwords so you'll know which ones you can go, and that, hope, that will hopefully, hopefully help you get out of password hell. And that's not going to load now. I'll show that for you later, but you can do it on your own. Okay. Moving right along, um, I'm going to talk about contacts, or some of you have it as address book first. Oh, I, I take that back. I'm going to ha I have a bonus. I'm going to do two things. I would like to do this before I start the classes sometimes. Two things today that I want to uh, help you with and show you how you can maybe make your Mac more useful. The first thing is, is John Fraser here asked me about his wife's having some challenges reading different things. And there's ways in your Macintosh to have it read for you, so it will help in situations like that. So I'm going to go to a website here. And oh, here was this thing. I'll let that come up in the meantime. I've got a little website. I'm at a website right here. So I'm going to highlight it by clicking and dragging, right? And if I take my finger and hit control or two finger tap, secondary click, I can come on down here to speech and say start speaking. The new iCal brings advanced calendar printing options. Use Spotlight to search all your events and to-do lists. Automatically create a birthday calendar from your address book. Grouping of associated calendars together. Get more out of iCal with Automator Actions and much, much more. Now, that doesn't work just in, in um, Safari. That'll work in Mail. If I go to Mail and I go to here and I highlight this, Control Click, Speech, Wow, party of the century, December 2nd, 2012, 2 p.m. Okay. There's also some capacity to do that on your iPhone and your iPad. Many times in my car, if I'm going along and there's an article on, my, on the phone, I can uh, turn on the uh, preferences and I can highlight an area and have my iPhone read to me a website while I'm driving or an email. 
Okay? We're going to see more and more of that. Go ahead. Just a quick question. My mail covers up the whole page with everything. It, doesn't, it was like that, but then I did something and it got the whole page. Just did you upgrade to 10 points? Did it happen when you upgraded to 10.7 or 10.8? Okay. Well, hit the. You can always hit the green dot. Oh, I know what you did. Okay, good. I'll bet you this is what happened. If you, uh, I don't want to do this on the recording. Uh, there's some arrows up there, and it's called full screen mode. And all, and your your menu bar up on the top went away. Did did this all up here go away? Yeah. Yeah. So if you move your mouse way to the upper right hand corner. You see what you see these little see that right there those little arrows you're going to if you move your mouse as high up and to the right hand corner when you're in that full screen mode for mail you'll see what looks like this there are two arrows in a box and they're pointing inward if you click that you'll go back to normal that's called full screen mode and apple thinks you want that <laughs> but apple thinks you want it so it must be good yeah, no, it's, it's full screen mode, it's in Safari, it's in a lot of these, and that's, as soon as you started describing that, because I've had a ton of calls on that, so you just go up to the right hand corner, the logo will look just like this, click it, and it'll come back to normal, and you go, oh, thank, thank you. you. So, if you have any trouble on that, call me, but really, move your mouse way up, because when you move your mouse up to the top, all of a sudden your menu bar comes back, and in the far right hand corner of your menu bar, it's up there. It's a little blue box with arrows pointing like that. So I don't want to screw up my, uh, what we can do is remind me during the break, when I turn the recording off, I'll do that because I think it might cut out the recording is the problem. Okay? So you can speak pretty much anywhere it is. Now, we can also have our Mac type for us. And I'll show you how that is. So if I'm in... Uh, if I'm running Mountain Lion, I can fire up a new email, and I'll put my cursor right here, and I'll double tap my function button and say, now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country, period, new paragraph. This is how you speak, comma, and have your Mac type for you, period, new line. It's absolutely remarkable, exclamation mark. I tap function again, and it comes up. And look at that. When you say function, uh... every Mac keyboard has a function key on it. Okay. So are you running Mountain Lion? Yeah. Try just, well, uh, let me show you where to set it. Sometimes if you double tap function, it'll try to turn it on. But if we go to system preferences, yeah. and you'll notice right down here in the fourth row in the middle, you'll see dictation and speech. Nice. And, oops, hang on. We want to be on dictation. And we turn it on. And then it tells you which key you want to use. I had a client using a non-Mac keyboard without a function key. So we changed this to double pr uh, press the right command key twice or something like that. But the default is the function key. So that's to turn on dictation. That's only in Mountain Lion. For those people not in Mountain Lion, there's an app, and the reason I bring this up is because it's normally $200, and it's on sale for a few more days for $99. Now, I'm not one to really pimp other software usually, but I've used this before. I really like it, and I think as we get older and older, and I mean, Siri is great, and we're going to have Siri on here, but what Siri does is it records what we say and sends it out over the Internet to this supercomputer, and it crunches it and sends it back to you as text. And it's really good. It's driven by, there's a company called Nuance, which is Dragon Naturally Spanking, you've probably heard of. Nuance is the company. And they're the one that has that engine that does that text to spe or speech to text recognition. But the problem is, people have different accents, you have different microphones. I have a cold right now, so I don't know how well it's going to work. But you have different inflections with this Dragon Dictation for the Mac, or Dragon Dictate, it learns your voice, your speaking patterns, etc., and your computer does all that crunching. And it does some other things. And I'll fire it up.
It may take a second. I haven't fired it up for a while. No, remind me later. So dictation software works better if you have a real microphone, OK? Uh, in my case, I use the microphone built in here. But those of you with iPhones, your iPhone headset will work on your Macintosh. Put it into the headset jack, and the microphone works through it. If you have a Mac Mini or a Mac Pro, you don't have a microphone built in. But every other Macintosh has a microphone built in. So here is Dragon Dictation. And it allows me, just like I did here in Mail, to leave that up for a second. Hello. Actually, yeah. here's some of the things you can, it talks to you all the different things you can do, caps on, all caps, etc. Text editing, I can say go to the next line, I can say go back a space. But I'm going to give you the simplest way because I have not really learned to use the whole thing as much as possible. Okay. So I'm going to click this little red microphone and I'm going to say, Launch text edit. So I didn't click text edit, I did it. Scratch that. This program, comma, listens as I speak, comma, and will type as I go, period. New paragraph. Whatever I say, comma, and whatever other people say, comma, will probably get dictated correctly, period. New line. If I make a mistake, I just say, scratch that, and it erases the last few syllables you said, period. Go to sleep. So that turned the microphone off. Okay, So that's Mac Dictate by Dragon Naturally Speaking. And it takes about 20 minutes or so for it. You read it a story, basically. And as you're reading the story, if you don't say things correctly, it will make you go back and reread those words. Because it, it's got specific words that have different, different ways of saying things. So it wants to learn how you say it. And I've even got a cold, and you see how well it did. Go ahead with a question. <coughs> yeah, it looked like you can't write in, scratch that. Yeah, I could. Because when you watch, when you set it, watch, it scratched it. Scratch. Period. New paragraph. Scratch that, period. We've had this discussion before because we were wondering, comma, as hockey fans, comma, the space between, scratch that, the length of each section of the game is called a period. Scratch that is called a period, period. Scratch that. <clears throat> there are ways to navigate back and forth on the screen, comma, and that's a little more detailed for here. And frankly, I'm not very good at it. I haven't learned it enough, period. But you can do complete hands-free navigation, comma, with this, period. Delete the word complete. You see that? So I delete the word navigation. Go to sleep. All right. So that's a tease. You know, this class isn't about that, but it's really, really, really good. The key here is, and I 
I'll tell you, I've got this email, and well, what I'll do is I'll probably put a link for this into my, uh, into the same place for the show notes. Show notes, Jesus, I sound like a podcaster. I wish I was. Um, so, Dragon. So this is there. Now, don't, so, like for 49 bucks, this is the, for 49, it's the PC one, okay? But for Mac, it's down here at $99. Whoa, it's with a headset? Oh my God, that's a fantastic deal. Let me click on that. Because it also comes with Family Tree Maker. And it's Family Tree Maker is separate. So it's it's in addition, it's it's a free one with it. So I'm clicking on that. And I'm gonna click on the thing if it said microphone. Yeah. Oh, wait. You know, it looked like it came with a microphone, and I'm not sure, but I bought it for nine. I was a previous user, and they had this special deal for me and me only a couple months ago, and it was $99. It's normally $199. Usually when it's on sale, it's $149. And I think really, to be honest, they're trying to push the PC version of it for Christmas. But secondly, she sent me, she sent me an email, too. Thank you. Um, they're trying to push the Mac version because I know that Siri's kind of taking over. But to be honest, it is... And the other thing is Siri, you have to be connected to the Internet. If you were somewhere where you didn't have Internet, your regular Dragon will work <laughs> just fine, and it allows you to do different things like launch pages, launch mail, launch Safari, Go to apple.com. No, won't do that. Sorry, there's a way to do it, and I don't know how. All right, so I'm going to... If you already have the dictation and the speech on the machine, you don't need Dragon? No, they're completely separate. Yeah. But they are different. Okay, the, the text-to-speech on your machine simply types for you. It won't navigate. I can sit here, and I, I, I could have no hands and Dragon could navigate my entire computer for me. Okay? So there was a question here? Does it work on iPad? No, on the iPad, we, and, and it never will, you're going to have Siri, but now if you have an iPad 3, an iPad 4, or the iPad mini, you have Siri on it, and, I'll sh and it will, the thing with Siri is you can say change to mail, or, ch or you say launch, or switch to, and it'll do that, and that's but it's over the internet, and that's gotten much, much better. So that's why you have it. It takes a tremendous amount of computing power to do this. That's why everything offloads it to the cloud. So, you know, it, and it's very good on the iPad. Can you put it on more than one computer? Uh, if you'd like to store it on another computer in case you lose it on this computer, yeah, you can. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah, it, it shouldn't be a problem. And most of those companies allow you, they kind of say within a household or a family, but it, it shouldn't be a problem. They, they figure, you, hey, they got you. Uh, it, the, the special, you buy it through the store, it's going to be a little bit more, but I see it down to $149. Sometimes it fries, it's usually $199, but you buy it through the internet. And you can either, and then you can do a download from it. I, I'm not. Sh I don't even think they have a 30-day trial because it's kind of entailed to get it going. So, but I'll have that link up there if somebody can kind of remind me. In fact, I may even post it during the break. Okay. All right. So that's the speech to text and text to speech and back and forth. We'll do some Siri fun during the break if you guys would like. I'm gonna go a little further here. So. Now we're going to get into address book and contacts. Now, I will constantly today make the mistake and call it address book. Because until Mountain Lion on your Mac, it was called address book, which made a lot of sense. And it made it a lot easier when I Google, how do I do this in address book? They knew I meant Mac address book. But because on our iOS devices, it's called contacts, for consistency, Apple is now also calling it contacts. The same is true for iCal calendar. And it does make sense. It really kind of, it, it puts it more mainstream where it needs to be. So, 
Anyway, um, contacts is where you should be storing all your information. I know people resort to the little black books and things like that, but as you have, as you have multiple devices, it's going to be important to have your contact and address book up to date. It's completely searchable. And the beauty of it is, if I change someone's phone number or address book on my Mac, it updates my iPad, my iPhone, and my other Macs. Macs. And more importantly, it will update my iCloud. So the iCloud is the internet place where all of your things are updated. So you could be on vacation and you're trying to send that postcard that says, if you're going to send a good old plain postcard, not email, that says, hi, having a great time, wish you were here in the Bahamas, and you don't have that person's address with you, you log on to the computer at the Internet Cafe, and you go on down here and find, okay, there's, uh, <coughs> excuse me, there, Apple Computer, you need their address. You could then get it from there, anywhere in the world, from your iCloud account, and your iCloud account syncs with your address book. I'm sorry, with your contacts. You know, I wish you guys were armed with soft things you could throw at me every time I make that mistake. But please excuse me, I use the two interchangeably. Oh, maybe it's because some of you guys aren't on mountain lion, right? How's that? So that's why I do that, just for those of you not on mountain lion. You're, uh, that's my aim, my aim to please everyone. All right, <clears throat> first and most important thing who here is not using Time Machine to back their computer up? It's okay to admit it. We're in a church. I'm that kind of guy. I can give you absolution. So who is not backing up again? Okay. Are you using something else? Well, I used... Um, uh, used. She didn't say uses. She said yeah, used. Uh, oh, Carbon Copy Cloner? Yeah, because trying to get it from Carbonite would have been. Yeah. So you know what? I don't want to get on a tangent, but backup's the most important thing there is. It's Apple from 10.5 and newer has built-in backup called Time Machine. You go. You don't have to go buy a Mac drive. You go to a computer store and pick up a drive. Costco has three terabyte drives for 139 bucks. You can get little portable one terabyte drives for $89. And you plug it into your Mac, and as soon as you plug it into your Mac, a little window pops up and says, hey, I see you plugged in an external hard drive. Do you want to use Time Machine on it? And you say, well, yeah, that's why I got it. So you click OK. And then it says, well, you know, I'm going to have to erase that drive to use it with Time Machine. And you go, well, that sounds scary, but it's a brand new drive. I don't care. And you click OK. And now Time Machine will back up your computer every hour that it's plugged in and every hour you're using your computer. How many here have been saved by Time Machine? OK. The rest of you need to be <laughs> I'm trying to get the. How many have been saved by Time Machine? Anyway, um, it's wonderful. Because, in her, like in her case, luckily she was able to pull the drive out. But it's just like that. If, I, if you get a brand new computer or if your computer gets stolen or your hard drive crashes, you simply take that computer that now has nothing on it, plug it into your time machine backup, and you say, restore back to where I was when it crashed. Everything, including passwords, your desktop, your photos and everything comes back exactly like it was when it last backed up. It's pretty simple. But Apple doesn't call it backup. It calls it time machine. And I like to tell the story about how that would work is, let's say you're out in the yard and you're taking pictures of the flowers that have these little raindrops on them now, and that always makes a pretty good little photo. And the neighbor's cat runs by and you get a picture of the cat. It's kind of blurry, but you save it to iPhoto. Well, after about two months, you're going through and you say, well, it's time to purge my iPhoto library. 
which isn't bad because remember you have a complete backup of it. So you can take out the, you decide to take that cat photo out because it's kind of blurry and you don't really like that cat anyway. So you delete that photo. Three months later, the neighbor comes over and says, my cat's lost. I know you had that photo. I need to make a lost cat photo. So now you make a moral decision. You go, well, I didn't really like that cat. Oh no, I don't have a photo. <laughs> or I can reach back into Time Machine. I deleted it three months ago and pull that photo back out of Time Machine and hope they don't find their cat. <laughs> but you can bring it in and you can, you, you can retrover. Whether it's a document, whatever you want, it's back in Time Machine from the very first day that you backed it up. Now the way Time Machine works is the first backup backs up everything so it takes a long time. After that, it only backs up anything new you do. New photos, new emails, new documents. So it backups very, very quick. Okay? Yes? That we discussed when you need to go find it because if I explain it to you, it just kind of gets all convoluted. But you can go into your photos if you know about when it was and find it. It's hard to find photos in, in amongst them, but you can. You can. It depends on how bad you want to find it. And usually you have to go back and find it. There's, there, you could have, but you can go find your photo if you know about a date when it was. Yeah, and you would look at some of your existing photos you knew you took at the same time of the flowers with the rain on them, and you can do it accordingly. Yes? No. Okay. iCloud is not really backup. iCloud backs up your documents you make in pages. It also does photo stream and your contacts. Other than that, it's not a true backup process. Now, one more step on backup. So Time Machine is a backup, even though it's called Time Machine. But think about this. Your Time Machine backup disk probably sits right next to your computer. And since this is, we're in December of 2012 and the world's supposed to end, let's just say the world ends for the, your block and a meteorite comes down and hits your house. You're not home, so you're worried about what happened to your computer and your backup. The meteorite got it, destroyed it. It's important to have a second backup, and I say have it more than 10 blocks from your house. Because if anything affects more than 10 blocks, you're probably not going to care about your data. So... You take a second drive, a little portable, plug it in and do a second time machine backup and take it and put it in a safe deposit box at work, at a friend or family house, so that occasionally you can go grab it and back things up in a second place. Believe me, if anyone has ever lost data, they'll tell you that sounds great. If you've never lost data, you go, why do I need to do that until you lose data? Okay? Think about it. The fire's rushing up Malibu Canyon. You see people running up. They, the people that are around run to their house and go get their photo albums. Your kids are never going to be five years old again. And some of those are digital photos. So just like grabbing your photo albums, if you're not home and the house burns down, you've got that other drive somewhere else. Tax returns, different things like that. Unless you've lost data, you don't know how tough that is. Okay? So that's, do it, please. The worst call, the first, the call I get is, my hard drive crashed, my computer got stolen, or my house got broken into, and the first question I ask, and I hold my breath when I ask the client is, do you have a backup? And when they say yes, believe me, it's as huge a relief to me as it is to you, because I hate it when people lose data. And we can, and... I mean, it's not just flood and fire. It's You can have a hard drive go bad. They go bad. Apple buys hard drives. They don't make hard drives, and hard drives fail. All hard drives fail, okay? So enough of that rant. I'm sorry. But it's important. But what we do with contacts is a lot of people go... Go ahead. What's there? The people go through in contacts, and you go and you want to purge your contacts and get it down because you have too many cards. The first thing you do in address book or contacts is go up to file, come down to export, and say contacts archive, or this will say address book archive in the older one. And what this means is, yes, I have time machine backup, but as she asked about the photo, 
it might be hard to go back and get it. So I want to make a local backup of my address, but before I mess with it, because I might mess things up. So I say contacts archive. And then what I always do is I make in my documents folder another folder called address book backup. And you'll notice that the name of this file is contacts 12. It does the date, okay? So I can do that. And now I hit save. And now my contacts are saved exactly like they are. So if I totally mess up and I accidentally delete half of my contacts, I can immediately go back and say import documents, address book, and there's my most recent one from today. And if I click on that, it'll say, do you want me to replace all the contacts in your address book with this previous backup? And your address book is right back to where it was. Now, one little caveat to that is when you go through and make your purge of the contacts or correct all these things, and if you're doing it the same day, and you want to back it up, you back it up pre-purge and post-purge, right? So when you do it post-purge, if I go to back it up again, I say export contacts archive, the date's exactly the same, so it'll try to overwrite the previous file, so just name it post-purge or something like that, so you'll have a before and after file, okay? I know that was a little fast. It's you can go through it and when we get the recording. Go ahead. Uh, Kim, is there any way to find duplicates? Yeah, I'm going to go through that. So thank you for asking. And in fact, I wanted to talk about backup first because duplicates may or may not do exactly what you want it to do. So, um, backing up locally is the first thing you want to do, and then. We're going to just talk about how to enter contacts. I'm going to show you the normal way, and then at the very end of this, when we transition to calendar, I'm going to show you a real easy way. So I'm in my, I'm in my contacts, and I go down here, and there's a little plus sign in the lower left. Okay? If I click that plus sign, I hover over it, and it says create a new card. Think of contacts and address book as the old Rolodex, you know, the card files, okay? They're called cards. We could call them whatever we want, but they call them cards. So I click new card. And I'm going to put, this is test. Then I hit tab, test. And I go through here, and I hit tab, and it, the company is also called test. And then I go through and now when I enter a phone number, I don't have to put punctuation in. 916-631-9838. And I hit the tab key, and look at that. It punctuates for me. The beauty of that is you're going to have consistency through all of your contacts. Now, on that first one, let's say it wasn't a mobile phone. It was a home phone. Okay, so I just select on the side, home or that. <laughs> when I finish editing, this secondary one will disappear, but you'll notice iPhone. And I do encourage you, if the person has an iPhone, put iPhone by it rather than mobile because there's some features if you're calling or going from iPhone to iPhone. The next thing is an email address. You would simply enter test at test.com. And then tab, tab again. This is if it's like a website, a URL. This is if they have an iChat or a username for iChat or one of those. Then we go to address. So I go one, two, three, main. Let's spell main right. Main Street, tab to city, any town, California. Zero, 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 zero. Tab. Oops, one. Tab. Okay, you don't have to fill in country. Down here, I can add another address, and I can be a work or home or other address. At this point, I'm going to show you what I had for later here. I can create a custom field. Let's say somebody still has a pager. Or, okay, uh, you guys have a house here, and you have a house over on the coast. 
So I'm going to enter a nine one. Let's uh, let's call it seven zero seven over there. Five five five. One two one two. So I can click on iPhone and say custom, and we'll say uh, coast. And now that's the title. So when you're looking at your iPhone or something else, you know which number is which number. Okay? You could have someone's name. If it's a husband and wife, you could do that. Always best husband and wives to make two contacts, but you don't have to. So your custom fields are anywhere. You could do that with the address here. I have a second address. Boom, down here. So I'm going to hit done at the bottom, and then I'm going to show you how we can come back and edit our test card. When you get here, you come down and you say, first of all, the notes section, I do not have to hit edits to put stuff in the notes section. And the notes section is searchable. This is where you might, you can make a group that says Xmas card list, or you could put in Xmas, and then you can search for everybody that has Xmas in the notes. You could say knitting club. And then everybody that should show up under Knitting Club. It's completely searchable. You can say, um, call after surgery on such and such a date. Jim? Is that all uh, Yes. Everywhere you have, everywhere you can type, you can dictate whether it be with Siri or whether it be with your Mac. Of course, comma, everywhere you type, you can dictate, period. Okay? But, you know, you probably don't want to put a ton of notes in there. And to be honest, the upper part, the dictation, sometimes gets a little difficult because you're doing numbers and letters. Let's talk about numbers for a second. <coughs> to type numbers, comma, you usually say numeral one, comma, numeral two, comma, numeral three, period. And let's see what happens when you do one, two, three, Main Street, comma, any town, USA. See, I said numeral one, numeral two. Most of the time, if you speak a number, if you speak a number, one, then you speak another number, two, comma, it usually types it out, period. See, it types it out. But if it's a numeral one, it gives me the number. Okay? So, 123 Main Street, Anytown, USA worked pretty well because I did a string of numbers. Okay? I like it because I hate putting dollar signs on things. You bought your house for $175,000, period, and you bought it at 10 o'clock p.m. on December 12th, period? Question mark. So it did the date and time, and it did the num numbers correctly, okay? So that was not really about notes. That was really kind of showing you that more of that text. So I can go through here and just delete that. Now, if I hit edit down here, I can go back up and edit my card contact. And you'll notice that it added another one on each of these that is available, but when I click done, the secondary ones go away and get out of the way. All right. Um, if you're entering a phone number and it's a voicemail system and it says, if you really want to talk to a live person, press 12 or press 1, excuse me. Um, but you know you call it and it says, for certain, certain extension, press now. You can hit a comma in a phone number, after the end of a phone number, comma, and I think each, each comma is a five second pause, and then you could put the extension you're trying to call after it. So sometimes that takes some work, because that way if you're calling it from a, your iPhone from here, you can do it. Commas are pauses. All right, hit done. Now, how many of you have gone to a website and you start filling in your address and it says, and it fills it in for you. How many have had that happen? How many know how it works? 
They must know you. It's Big Brother, right? Yeah. I've never been to this website before, and they filled in my address. Kind of scary? No. Safari, which is why you want to use Safari, reaches into your address book on your card and finds your address and your phone number. <laughs> First of all, it makes it a lot easier, but second of all, it eliminates typos because you've entered it one time and you have to have a thing in here called my card. And let's show you how, what that is. If I go up here and I go, usually when you've set up your Mac the first time, you'll get a my card. So I say, go to my card. Now you'll notice the silhouette right there. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> A few too many things. I need, I need to purge my address book, okay? But you see the little silhouette? You'll only have one of those, and that's your My Card. And that's where it derives that information from, for, for entering it in Safari, okay? So make a My Card. If you don't have one, put yourself in, let's say, this one here, and I say, Card, make this My Card. I could switch it back and forth, okay? It's really important. And especially if you're using Siri on your phone, you say, Take me home. It's got to know where home is. You could also have work on there too. Say, take me to work, etc. So, um, the My Card is very, very important. And I'll show you where in Safari that preference is. It should be on by default. In Safari Preferences, if we go to Autofill, it's the first one that says, using info from my contacts card. And if I hit edit, it brings up my address book. So maintain your people when they first signed up for their Mac. They didn't have a phone number in there or anything else. Maintain your My Card because it's very, very useful for autofill. The other thing that's important and Apple doesn't always have it there is select the middle one that says usernames and passwords. That helps it remember usernames and passwords when you go to websites. It's a security issue, but I think it's very, very important. Okay. Those were in, that was in Safari and Preferences. So it's this My Card. If mine, mine's coming at Gmail and I want it in Me.com, is that where you switch it? Yeah, you would. Yes, yeah, so if you want to take the other one out, yeah. it would always come up to that. Or what you can do is, I say if you have Home or Work as the first one, but then put the other ones as Other, and it usually won't won't take the other. Okay, but if you start typing one of your email addresses in a spot on a website, it'll fill in the one you're typing. And you change that at My Card. Correct. Okay. And which is, a My Card is simply in a contact or a card in your address book and your contacts, it's just yours. Yeah, the only difference is it made it's your card. So you and then My Card's also important too. When we do later here, I'm gonna show you how to print envelopes and labels because you've gotta have a return address on there, okay? And we are going to go a little bit past the break. On We're going to bring address book contacts after the break, too, because iCal calendar doesn't take as long. So how many people keep birthdays on your calendar? Okay. How many keep it in your address book or contacts? Okay. In a calendar, it gets kind of tough to deal with because you repeat and stuff, and we'll talk about that in calendar later. You really want your addresses or your, um, you want your, uh, ad your birthdays and anniversaries in address book because what happens is the calendar looks in address book and finds it and it doesn't fill your calendar up all, all that much and it won't create all those duplicates a lot of you have. So I have to do, I have to modify my, my card to do that. So in address book or contacts, you go up to Preferences, and you click on Template. So again, this is the template of the card. And you can see here, there's the fields we already have. Phone, email, URL, username, and notes. But I want to add some fields to it, and this is important. Apple's very minimalist, and they don't put a lot of fields in here to begin with because they don't want to bore you with a whole bunch of stuff. But frankly, I think it's more useful. So if I click on Add Field, 
I can do phonetic first and last name. That's very useful, and that's very useful if you're trying to use Siri to say call someone. I have a client. Her name's Ann Young. Two very short names. It always messes up on that. But if I put a nickname in there, it will call her, and it differentiates that. Prefix, I don't worry about. Middle name, that's up to you. Job title, department. Maiden name, you could add that on there. Sometimes you want that. But look at that, birthday. I'm going to click birthday to add it. And I'm going to click on here to say dates also, OK? And I'm going to click on related names, all right? So now I've added all those to my template. I close this. And let's go search. What was the name of the person we were entering? Mm -hmm. Test. T-E-S-T. -E oh, there's test, test. So there's test, test, OK? It found it by in that little search box. So now over here, when I hit edit, I've got more things. I can add birthday, uh, 12. And I can enter however I want. I can spell out December 2nd or December 1st. Let's, let's, I can spell it out, or I can go 12-1-1990, uh, OK? Tab. Now, the next one we added was dates. Remember that instead of birthdays? I have other, custom, it could be dates, it could be uh, divorce date, it could be anniversary, it could be uh, retirement date, it could be anything. You can create a custom date. It doesn't necessarily show up in your calendar. Well, actually, let's try this. Let's try the same date. And, and by the way, you do not have to put a year in. You used to have to put a year. You don't have to put a year in anymore. And then here's related names. Mother, spouse, anything else. Assistant, like if it's a business and it's an assistant. Um, and that was it for the, temp the things we added from contacts, preferences, template. Contacts, preferences, template, and then add field. Okay? So, we're going to go really quickly to calendar and see if that showed up. So, December 1st, Tess's 22nd birthday. Because we put the year in, it figured out the birthday. Okay? That's right up here. Okay? And it's a little, a little bow. And actually, it's funny, you see, I have a bunch of these, and my contacts, and I don't, I don't really like that it did it, but it's okay. It went in here, and it, it went in and got birthdays of people, of friends I have on Facebook, and they put their birthdays in here for me so I can have it. It's kind of nice, but it's a few more birthdays than I want to deal with. So, um, let's see. Yes? How do you delete this? You know, it's in the syncing and calendar. So remind me when we go into calendar, we'll try to do that. Or it might even be through address book, but I think it's, um, yeah, there's a, there's a key there. But it's, it's, it's a one way only to use, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt you. Um, if I go into calendar preferences, uh, yeah, I'll check. Remind me when we go to calendar for that. Okay, back to address book. So again, test, 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 test. And... Let's go over here to the iPad. One second. Go ahead. I'll show you when we go to iCal. Because it's a setting, it's a preference in, in iCal, and that's one of my little things. But I wanted to set the stage here, and again, I think address book is, or contacts is more important. So, But you'll notice here my contacts, and I, my, my iPad hasn't touched my computer, it's about two inches away, and test showed up in my iPad, in my contacts in my iPad, okay? And even the birthdays are already there. All right. Um, the other thing is up here where it says company, when I hit edit, so many times you might have a person's name, but you really only care that it's Mac Nexus, for instance. So if I, I put in the company name, actually, let's do company. We're going to call it test company. 
All right, so test company is the name of the company. Now, if I select company, it displays, and you'll notice over here, it'll display it by the company name. If I deselect company, it displays it by the person's name. Okay, there's a lot of times when you don't really care what the person's name is or you don't even have a name. If there's no name there, it will automatically take company if you haven't done it. But this way it makes it so you've got someone's name at the company, but you really, you're not going to remember that person. So when you go look in your address book, you want to know that it's uh, knittingandsewing.com or something like that. So that's the little company checkbox. And you'll notice that you can barely tell it, but it kind of becomes a, like buildings is the little icon. Okay. Um, all right. How do we remove duplicates? We remove, du first we got to look for duplicates and remove them. And you're all going to have some duplicates. So remember, I just made a backup of my address book. So I'm okay to go look for duplicates. I go in here and I'm on all contacts. It doesn't really matter. And I go to card. And I say, look for duplicates. And when I click on it, it looks my entire database. And, sorry, I, done, I did it about two months ago. But what it will do is, it will say, I've found, actually, um, no. It will, it, if it'll say it found some, it'll say, do you want me to merge them? Like, you may have the same person but you only had an email address because you got your contact from somewhere else. And over here, you have their phone number and, their at, and then their street address, right? Well, it sees it's a duplicate card. Or <coughs> you might have a home and a work. A home in one card and a work address in the other card. It'll merge those cards. Okay? And the thing is, is I, would, I do this until it either says no duplicates were found or... It will consistently say, I found three duplicates. Do you want me to merge? And you keep hitting it. And every time you do it, it gets down to three. For some reason, there's a stubborn three and it won't, won't do it. You know, three, five, whatever. But keep doing it until there's no more. And what it actually does is merge those cards together. It gives you less cards and then it puts multiple information in on a card. There's another thing called merge card. So let's say I highlight, I'm on test, test. And if I command click and highlight aim test, I can say merge selected cards. So let's say the actual look for duplicates didn't merge the cards you wanted, but you know this is Bob Jones' work address and somehow it didn't find it and it's working. Merge the two cards. Okay, enough of that. Yes? Okay, the question was, if you have a particular group of people that you want to have in there, do they have to be in your group? Yes. So if you think about it this way, there's a big shoebox, a big Rolodex full of cards. But I can also take that same big Rolodex and say, this is the garden club. But they still have to be in there. Okay, because I know how that is with Christmas card lists and things like that. But you know what? The way to kind of get around that is you could take all your contacts and not do your garden club in there yet. Take all your contacts and make a group that says all my contacts except garden club and get them into that group. Again, it's a group of all your cards except the garden club, and then you make a garden club, and what you actually do is just look at that. Like, I actually culled down one of mine at one point just because I wanted only so many ones to show up on, on my old phone before I had an iPhone, just because I didn't want to see 300 names on there. I wanted to just see the top 20. So there's ways to do it, but no, they have to be in the address book to do it. And what's the harm of putting them in the address book? Was my question. I just didn't want to have to look at all of them all the time. You don't, because you can exclude them and you can say it. But the other thing is, I would, 
don't worry how many you have. It takes up very little room and you have very good search right here. You can search by, forget, forget having to go look for somebody, search for them. I'm going to go over search in a minute. But let's talk about sort. Go ahead. Going back to deleting, is that function in an iPad? To delete a contact? Yes. You don't have to delete it, but to find duplicates. No. Nor can you make groups, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, too. Right as soon as I'm, I want to do sorting first, and then we'll get into groups. So I prefer to sort by first name. Some people prefer sort by last name. And once you sort, you can display by first name first or last name first. And let me show you where to control that. And you also have these same controls in your iPhone and your iPad. I go up to Contacts Preferences, and I go over here to vCard. I'm sorry. General. So show the first choice is show the first name before the last name or following the last name, which mean last, would mean last name first, right? The second one is sort your contacts by first name or last name. And that's where you control that. Now, I'm going to go to all my contacts. And you'll notice here, it's hard to see, but the first names are bold, and the second name is not bold, which just lets me know that's how it's sorting. Okay, It's sorting by first name. Okay, Obviously, if you're on company, it sorts it by the company name. It throws that in there only if you have company checked. Okay? <laughs> so that's sorting. <sighs> Groups. Groups is very powerful. And I encourage you to use I use. I encourage you to use groups because it is very powerful. Think of it like a filter. I'm going to I have I have a test group right here in fact. Yeah, good. So I have a test group I've made and I have people in that test group. Now, let's say I want to add somebody to the test group. Um, I'm going to go back to my all contacts and I let's say I want Aileen Murphy to go down in here into my test group. I drag it right down here and put it in my test group, okay? I click and release. Now, Watch what happens if I try to add her again. It won't let me put it in the test group. So I don't get duplicates. So if you can't remember if you put the person in the test group or not, don't worry about it. So in that test group, you can do whatever you want with it. Boy, we got more. Almost all women, only one guy. Very cool. Anyway, um, you want to use your groups because then it's like you said, you know, you want to cull it down. You could have family. You can have other things. The other thing is it's a nice mailing list. So if I go to Apple Mail and I hit new message and I type in test, I have two tests. Remember, I made tests at test.com, right, just a minute ago. But if I have a test group, so if I hit return on test, that's everybody that's in that group. So if I go back and let's see, I have a, here we go, a McCormick group. This was an old sales group. Um, actually, what is this objective? To uh, here, here is my old hockey team. So this is P Puck Fury is what it is. So if I go back to, and you don't say that too quickly. So I'm in mail, and I type P-U-C-K. There's Puck Fury, and there's everybody that was in that group. Okay. Now, if they don't have an email address in the group, they will not show up here. Same thing as if you go and do this in a phone. If you're trying to do a phone on your iPhone to call somebody, it won't. You had a question? Can you just put that in BCC? Yes, you can put it anywhere. And you should put it in BCC. 
<coughs> it's the same. They all act the same, 2CC and BCC. All right. So back to contacts. Sure, John, go ahead. Last year, uh, I had a question on how to use the group addresses to either address Christmas cards uh, or to make uh, <coughs> tape on it, you know, or, or list, I should say. And uh, I forgot what the heck I was doing. <laughs> and I still got the group here. Yeah. I kind of think, like, what am I going to do with that doggone thing? Maybe it's addressed envelopes. Which we're going to get into here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was that's my bonus. If you guys read the thing later on, it's a bonus part of the class, and it'll be we might have to do it after the break because I I want to spend some time on it. So I told her there's no need to keep your address book really small because you can search any way you want because you have this little search thing right here. But the best search on your entire Mac is way up here in the right called Spotlight. So, and I don't know why it's indexing it. But anyway, uh, up here in Spotlight, I can search for, let's just search under Mac Nexus. Oops, if I spell it right. Uh, well, I don't know why my hard drive is indexing. I, it's stupid. My hard drive shouldn't be indexing. Oh, yeah, but still, thank you. There we go, it's working. So, Spotlight is searching my entire computer for wherever the word to Mac Nexus is. Now, if I go down here, and unfortunately I don't have anybody with Mac Nexus in my contacts, so let's do this. Let's go look for Bob White. And that's not going to work. Let's look for Pete. Pete Losey. Uh, you know what? It's because it's indexing. What would happen is it would normally show up right here and show me <laughs> the contact card. So let's uh, go Act 2. On my iPad and my iPhone, has anybody ever gotten this black screen like this? This is Spotlight on the same thing. So let's type in uh, Bob white and you'll notice it shows contacts okay that's what's supposed to happen in spotlight when it's not indexing your drive so the indexing of the drive is what it's doing on my computer right now and it and it, it really shouldn't but it's it indexes your drive and it goes out and if the name mac nexus or bob white was even in a pdf it will go inside that pdf and find that word if it's a map with the word Mac Nexus on a map, it'll find it. So that's where Spotlight is such a powerful search. Here it is in my iPad, and that's everything where the word Bob W shows up. Those are messages. And then, oh, and that was a reminder. So, and then there were some messages back and forth. So, how you get to that is on your, on your iPad and your iMac is you simply Go to your home screen and then hit the home button one more time and it gets you to this black page. Yeah, you can swipe to it. In fact, most of you have gone there and you go, what the hell is this? <laughs> What's this? It's all black. Yeah. Come on, Apple, give me a breadcrumb. Tell me what to do. Does the phone do that? Too? Yes. Every iOS device will do this. So that's why. And, and you'll notice since this is indexing and wouldn't find the card for me on the computer, Yeah, see, it's just not giving me everything. But at least it's searching messages and mail. But I just don't know why it's indexing for me. I apologize for that. But anyway, it probably needs a restart. All right. So searching is powerful. So therefore, you don't really have to care about groups or anything like that. You cannot make groups on your iPad or your iPhone yet. We think that'll be coming. I thought it was going to come in six. It'll come in seven. But in fact, if you have groups, we go back to this. You see I have all those groups. Well, if I go to my contacts on my iPad and I hit groups, look at this. All my same groups are there. Okay. And you, someone asked about deleting a contact. Let me show you that. So if I go to a contact 
And here's a test test that I just made, right? If I hit edit and I go to the very bottom, there's your delete contact. Okay, on your iPhone and your iPad. Yes? Is there a way to, sh I mean, I've got groups and I've got them on my computer and they show up on my contact list on my phone, but if I, sh if I click on the group, I don't get the members in. Let me, let me show you here. So we'll go back and hit done. So if I click on the group sign, I want to, first of all, I'll hit all contacts to deselect all contacts. Then I go and click the one contact group I want to display. Does that make sense? And then in the upper right here, I hit done. And then it's just those people that were on that phone group. Back to groups. Let's do a shorter one. I'll talk. Every time you tap it, it's on and off. There, McCormick was a small group, so when I hit done, you see I just have those contacts. Again, watch the screen. I go back to groups in the upper left. Normally, you're going to be on all contacts, which is everyone checked. If I want to deselect any particular one, I tap it. But more than anything, if I just turn them all off and then say, give me just McCormick, up in the upper right, that says done, hit done, and then it's just those. Okay? Thank you. Sure. But again, it's one of those things. And now on the iPad too, just like in, we did on mail for the Mac, if I just start typing the group name, it'll just fill in the group. On, your, on the right side there, on, on the uh, iPad, it doesn't, when you put the group, it doesn't show the addresses. No, you have to hit that done button in the upper right. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> How many have started? This will be the this will be the top hit before we break for lunch or break for our break. Um, How many of you have addressed an email? And let's call it uh, A B C at. Uh, T E S T dot com. Okay. Or I'll make it dot com com. Okay. Oh, hang on. So I'm going to try send this. It's a totally wrong address, right? So. It's going to probably bounce back to me, but if not, but the next, if you've sent a wrong address, and the next time I go A, B, C, see it tries to fill it in, right? It's on my list to fill in. Because it remembered that stupid wrong address. I had a client just worked with two days ago who they had sent an email, and it was to SBC, sbcglobal.com instead of .net, and it kept coming back. So... If they start typing that person's name again, it's going to fill in every time. How do I get rid of that? There's two ways. I have to enter it, and then I click on the little triangle, and I say, remove from previous recipient's list, and it will not autofill after that. The other place you can get that is up here at window, previous recipients is your list. And I could type for A, B, C and I can delete it there and remove it from the list. So if I say remove from list, now when I delete this, when I tip ABC, you see there's no. Okay. So that's really, oh, what's AB, what's that one? Oh, that was a group. Okay. All right. So it's 1020. Let's take about a fit. Oh, got to turn the recording off. Let's take about a 15 minute break and come on back. Go enjoy refreshments downstairs. And. Let's see, this is. This is. Twelve dash one dash twelve part one.